Hello, hello, hello. It's the Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas. That's right, guys. This is one of my first podcast shows, and I'm super excited because this is something that I'm trying out. But like I said, if I tip my toe on that water, I'm going to go all the way because I'm not going home because we go big or we go home, and this Texas never goes home. So I'm trying something new. This is a podcast that I feel like everyone's going to love. I feel like it's something that I haven't really had a chance to really have my voice in a lot of things so I feel like my segue into after the industry and what's next for Miss Texas is you gotta hear what Miss Texas is all about so I'm super excited for this new venture and um, I'm super excited for this guest as well this is someone that I've known for quite some time I respect him I appreciate his fashion and people I feel like everyone especially my listeners are going to really be excited about this guest so I have Carl Kanye nigh with me so give it up give it up give it up private talk podcast we are here so you better hit that like button hit that subscribe because if you want to hear what this man has to say you better get that shit going all right carl thank you for being on my podcast how are you doing tonight i am doing great i had some 1942 just now so i'm righteous right now nice yeah you know this is an intimate conversation it's um, not as taboo as most people would like to be but i just want you to feel comfortable feel right feel good feel you know this is private talk with miss texas and i appreciate you for coming on i appreciate you for it's something that's very new so for you being one of my first guests i feel honored that you um just you know what you took that toe and you jumped in with me so here we go private talk podcast it's lit so what I like about you is like you've always just very been um, very humble, very honest, but you're just such an icon in your industry. Yeah. So tell us more about who you are, what you, where you come from, what you're all about. Let's let, private private yeah. talk wants to know. Let's do it. So basically, you know, Carl Kanai, I'm from the streets of Brooklyn, New York. I was born in Costa Brooklyn. Rica. Yeah, there you go, Brooklyn in the house without a doubt. You know, I was born in Costa Rica. My family migrated here when I was three years old moved to Brooklyn and my dad came here to set up shop and set up a business and import my mother and my sister from Costa Rica. And here we are. We so what kind of business did he set up? A printing service. A, a type printing service. service. Yeah, okay. he came here and he set up a type printing service called, after me and my sister, it's called Carl Varney Composition Service. Awesome. And he was doing um, typesetting for a lot of banks. This is before there was like computers and um, internet and all those type of things like that. Yeah, explain what typesetting is. Typesetting, basically, you do letterheads for banks and you do their logos, you do it all by hand. Nice. And you kind of like type out the letterheads and you cut and paste it on a piece of paper, you Xerox copy it, you kind of go from there. He had a lot of bank That's accounts. like the real true talent. Like it's a lot of like time and work and very precise things. So it's like back in the day when people wouldn't want to do that stuff, it's like, like a delicate thing. Yeah, so he, he was more like a businessman. So he taught me the ropes of like not working for anyone and doing things for your own. And my dad was a very fashionable person, so he'd get his clothes made by a tailor back then. So he kind of showed me like how you can make clothes without technically knowing how to sew. He had ideas, but he surrounded himself with people who didn't know how to do things he knew how to do. So he didn't know how to sew, so he hired sewers and tailors to make his clothing for him. So the process kind of segue me into As every great, great business brand. person does. Absolutely. We know what our crafts are, but sometimes we have to have to outsource things that we're just... We know the vision. Yeah, for sure. So it kind of gave me my segue into being a business entrepreneur. My dad had the motto, never work for anyone. Do it on your own. Find a way to make things happen. That's always been in my blood and my genes to do that for success in America. Nice. Yeah. That's really cool. So do you feel like that you've owned up to all of those things? I did because, uh, <clears throat> you know, my dad was a fashionable guy and he liked jewelry and flamboyant he drove all the fancy cars the cadillacs and the lincolns back then mm-hmm. with the white wall tires and my dad was the first person to actually have a tv in his car he took out the glove compartment in his cadillac and put a tv in the glove compartment and uh, and back then you don't no one ever did that no one ever like did you didn't, that. didn't even know what that was at no that idea. time like it was <laughs> so it showed me the ropes in terms of Break the rules, figure things out, or you yeah. make this thing happen. So <clears throat> when my daughter, when my dad and my mom got divorced, we ended up moving to the inner city in East New York and Brooklyn. 
And that's when fashion became real to me. So let me tell you what happened. I went outside and I wanted to meet all the kids in the projects, right? So How old were you at this time? About 12 years old. Okay. And I thought I was really cool. I had whatever clothes my mother bought for me. And back then, they used to sell clothing in the grocery store. Okay. Sneakers and t-shirts at the end of the aisle, the frozen food department. So at that time, did you like make your own style with what you had, or did you just rocked what you got at the grocery store? Rocked grocery store stuff. Okay. I thought I was cool. Hey, get it. When I'm it's open. all about swag. I thought I had swag. I had no <laughs> swag whatsoever. And I found out really quickly. So I went outside to meet all the kids in the projects, and I thought I was cool. So I went out there, and I thought I was chilling. So they was like sizing me up. They was like, oh, you're the new kid in the projects and moved into A3? I was like, yeah. He's like, man, what kind of sneakers you got on? I was like, um, all about the sneakers. <laughs> these are skips. <laughs> they was like, man, get the fuck out of here. Let me just come from the grocery stores, bro. We get out of here with that shit. I was stunned. I felt demoralized. They were laughing at me. I went home crying to my mom. I was like, mom, I need some money to buy some clothes. And these kids are laughing at my clothes. They said you bought it from the grocery store. I need yeah. some better clothes. My mother was like, Psh, boy. If you don't go get a job. She said, boy, you was gonna find, go out there and find yourself a job. <laughs> exactly. Right? I was like, okay. I refuse to go back out there and be demoralized again. So I re two weeks, I didn't go back outside to hang out with these kids. And I saw a newspaper truck. And I saw these kids going to the newspaper truck. I'm like, what are you guys doing? They said, oh, we deliver newspapers in these bills. He's actually looking for a new paper boy if you want to do this. I was like, you can make money for delivering newspapers? They're like, yeah. I'm like, I'm in. Yeah. All I want to do is find a money. way to make some money. Yeah, so you that's can get it. some of those clothes, that's but they're not going to make fun of you anymore. No that's it. You just you wanted to floss it. That's it. Yeah. So I got the newspaper route. I just get up at 5.30 in the morning. Because you had to deliver newspapers for it before everyone went to work. What time was school? Like 8 o'clock. Okay. I got 5.30, delivering newspapers to make money. So finally, I was able to save up. I bought me a pair of Pumas and a Campus Latigo short set. Ooh, ooh. And the Pumas at that time was $17. And the Campus set was like $30. So $42, I had a fresh outfit. Yeah, right? yeah. So now I'm nervous. One time use. Yeah. If they don't say you're fresh to death, you fucked. Now, now you have to go so put them in I was so scared to go back out there and meet these kids again. So now I'm fresh. I got some white and white Pumas, a white short set. I'm going back out there again. And all the kids are sitting in the same spot they were, right? So I walk up there, just like looking at me. Like, ah, shorty got the white and white Pumas, the white short set. So now I was, I was accepted. You're, yeah. That feeling of being accepted meant everything to me. Everything. For sure. Now I felt like I'm one of the boys now. So that feeling, I never want to lose it again. So I know I, th but. I knew that clothing is what made you stand out in the hood. It's not about how much money you got, because we was all broke. For sure. But you have fresh clothes on, do you good money. So now I realize this could be my calling now, right? That's respect, though. A lot of people don't know what that would mean. They don't know anything about that. So this is the time when hip-hop was just sort of coming up, and hip-hop was always about bragging. Mm -hmm. But what you got, how much juice you got, everything like that. It's always about moving forward. So I figured, let me try to outdress these guys. All of my friends, we used to shop at the same stores. So anytime we got something fresh, we, know t we never told anybody where we got it from. So we want to always be- I still know people like they, that. They don't give up secrets. They right? don't want to tell you no, nothing. nothing. They right? don't want to tell you nothing because they know it's so good. They're yeah. like, nah, because everyone's going to cop that They tell you nothing, right? <laughs> so one day I thought about my dad's tailor. I was like, wow, if I make an outfit with this tailor, none of these guys would have it because it's fresh. Because what we were doing back then, we were buying clothing two sizes bigger because we wanted baggy. Mm -hmm. But they weren't making clothes like that. So when I made my outfit with the tail, I made it more looser in the legs. When I wore that, everybody's like, oh, man, that's fresh. Where'd you get it from? Where'd you get it from? I'm old school. I'm not telling about I'm my tail. I'm not telling you nothing. I ain't telling you nothing. So I was like, you what would I make you one? And back in the 90s in New York. That's hot, though. Yeah. Everybody was selling drugs. Drug dealing was almost legal back then because everyone was everyone doing, was doing it. it. Yeah, everyone was doing it. So I decided, I started selling clothing to all the dudes in the projects, right? That's your own hustle though, yeah, I was, respect. I, I was hustling. Well, how, yeah. Instead of selling drugs, I was selling clothing to the drug dealers in the projects, right? But here's the key. The most important day that established everything. I was sitting in the park one day and I was bragging to these girls about I was making these clothes for these guys. They didn't believe me. 
There's a drug dealer named Joe. He was one of the biggest drug dealers in Brooklyn. He walked by, I was bragging, I made the outfit for him, the girls didn't believe me. They said, tell him to come over here then. He comes over, she's I like- I love that, I love that. <laughs> she's like, a girl named Keisha. She says, oh, Keisha. who made the outfit for you? He said, Carl made it, why, what's up? She says, can I see your jacket? He takes it off. Keep in mind, this is the most important day of my career. She looks at it. She says, well, if Carl made it, how come his name ain't on it then? Facts. That's when it hit me. She was completely right. I wasn't owning it. I was just making custom made clothing. Yeah. It had no name, no logo, nothing. It was, it was nice clothing. Had no but brand. You didn't, get your, you didn't get the like props branding. to know that it was Carl's. It was mine, yeah. yeah. Of course. She's being a smart aleck, but she was right. I didn't own it. That night I went home. This is the time when Miami Vice was out. Scarface just came out. Every dude in the projects loved the movie Scarface. Everybody wanted to be like Tony Montana. You understand what I'm saying? Of course, why not? <laughs> when she said that, I went home listening to Phil Collins in the air tonight. That's good. Over and over and over again. Guess what I was thinking about? A name for my brand. Because I wanted to be like Polo. I want to be like Ralph Lauren. I want to be a Tommy Hilfiger. I want to be a Calvin Klein. Because that's the most crucial thing is branding your name because you have one shot. One shot. That's it. My dad changed our name to an American last name. We moved to the United States to Williams. I was like, Carl Williams Jeans. Mm. Just didn't have a ring to it. Over and over, I'm listening to Into Air Tonight. And my mother was like, Carl, turn that music down. He's, he's, he's playing the same song over and over. Pissed off. I was actually manifesting at the time, but I didn't know that's what I was doing. I used to doodle a lot. Meaning like, anytime I get a pen in my hand, I used to write the same thing on a piece of paper over and over again. One night I kept writing, Carl, I was writing the word, can I, C-A-N-I. Can I was a question I used to ask myself, can I do this? Okay. Can I be successful? Can I come from the inner city and build a brand and make other guys wear my brand on them? True. I didn't know sure. the answer to that because it's never been done before. Then I realized if I call myself can I, that name will have meaning to it. Every day I have to answer that question, yes I can. Yes you can, yes we all can. So I decided my name is gonna be Carl Kanai and that's how Streetwear was started. That's awesome. No one else, no other designer, no other brand could ever tell you they started Streetwear before me because it's not factual. Because we started off of energy and me just trying to figure things out and that's how Streetwear was implemented from the streetwear, making people believe that if you could do it, I could do it too. For sure, that's a beautiful thing. I mean, the fact that that's not only inspiring, but it's just like it's your truth, and so it's it's so much more beautiful than that. But that thing that that it's 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 just so became so organically your truth so, of knowing from the thing from the you knowing what you wanted from your clothes or knowing that the, the reflection of what you, the truth that you wanted from the boys in the block or the girl telling you that where's your name at you know like the respect of not only that you made that item or whatever it was right. but you made it fly yes yeah, right. like you made it hot like you know what i mean like that's such a a big respect especially in a time of like like you said like you start from nothing and you became something not only because of a belief that you had but because other people talked about it that inspired you even more absolutely so that to me is like i'm very big on energy and like the love and like there's certain things that come just to like in like intuition by yourself you don't even know when it's going to happen and maybe that was like a, your your calling and obviously it was because you're still here yeah. after all this time you've made a a big you know impression from the beginning you're still here today and that i think that that's you know what inspires me is like i said i've met you in 2015 right. you know in a way that it you know i knew who you were, but not who you were, you know Actually, what I mean? Yeah. So it was like in your very soft spoken and you're very like, you know, to yourself, which is very, you know, appreciative because you're an artist in your own, you know, in your own respect. Um, but I think that right now, like what I think uh, attracted me more was because of your rebranding of not only just taking the stakes of who you were, but taking now into like, being like, hey, I'm still who I am, but you know what? I'm doing this stuff and you're gonna still, you know, because people are still wearing your stuff. People are still talking about you. You've, you've redone 
a lot of things, yeah, you know? Um, but from the start, let's talk about like, who do you think celebrity wise is who s- pushed your brand the most in the beginning that made <sighs> Carl Kanai after you named yourself Carl Kanai and can you, and obviously you can, right. um, who pushed that for you? Like what was the, you know, the segue after you named yourself and made that way? Yeah. You know, <clears throat> our journey has been so real and everything's been God sent. And everything's done without thought. I just did. We came out to LA with a thousand dollars in my pocket, with a pocket full of dreams. We opened up a store on Crenshaw Boulevard in the middle of South Central, two blocks away from Nipsey Hustle store that he opened up on Crenshaw. Okay. My store is forty three twelve Crenshaw Boulevard on Lamarck Park. And we didn't know what we were doing. But we we're just on a mission to succeed. You had a dream. Yeah. And failure was not an option. You know, like we never thought about failure. We never thought this was not gonna work. So the first music artist that we met out here was Easy E, Dr. Dre, at the Palladium in Hollywood. We met them and they were so receptive to everything we're doing. They were like, they want to rock our clothing. It was they would new. wear that anyway. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It was new and it was different. So hip hop to me at the time didn't have any clothing brands that was representing that culture. We were that brand that represented the hip hop culture. No other clothing companies didn't embrace hip hop. They never thought hip hop was even gonna last. Yeah. Matter of fact, a lot of designers- They didn't know what it was. Yeah, they didn't even want hip hop artists in their clothing. They thought that it would- uh, Tarnish their brand, do course, whatever, yeah. just like, yeah. yeah, of course. But I embraced what we knew and I embraced- Because that's who you were. That's who we were. We were just, we were built from the cloth these other kids are built from. We all grew up in insecurities. We all were scared. We didn't know what we were doing, but we knew we wanted to succeed. We know we didn't want to go back to where we came from. I didn't want to go back to the hood because there's nothing back there. Of course, and that's a respect of the entrepreneurship. I feel like is we all know where it comes from, it stems from, and there's no other way but winning. We're not taking any yells, we're going up. It's winning, but you know what's really crazy about it? I realized that that thought of me being demoralized with those guys making fun of me of the clothing is what pushed me to never want to feel that feeling again. So when I decided that I want to build a business, failure was not going to happen. We of course. There's no thought pattern to that. So we- Because you're investing in yourself at that time. Yeah. And you know, the key about Alexis was it was done with no thought. I didn't think about how I felt. I knew we had to move forward and get this thing done. So as we went through Easy e the first- big artist that we got to do a clothing campaign was Puffy P. Diddy. Okay. Back in 1991, he did my first clothing ad for me and we launched it in Vibe magazine, no, sorry, Source magazine. 1992, Carl Kanai, the first ad in Source. We magazine had P. Diddy, Ivy. all white, baggy, Carl Kanai sag with the red shorts fresh. on, chilling, yeah, yeah. fresh to death. And this whole look was totally new to all the kids on the street. Yeah. Everybody wanted this look that we were doing. The original is the streetwear. So he kind of set it off for us. And like from there, it went from Puffy, Tupac, Biggie, Nas, Jay-Z, Eminem. It's back. They just yeah. kept rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. The craziest thing, we got Michael Jackson to wear my clothing in 1995. The only time Michael Jackson wore streetwear was Carl Kanai. And... During these moments, I didn't realize how big these moments were in the process. Not to reflect back to those days. I can understand that. I'm realizing how, how big that was. each moment was. Do you know what I'm saying? 1,010%. You know, I'm in a moment in my life where, you know, I was on a fast track to my business and I was really successful in my business. And I, like I said, I have no qualms of anything in my business, but you didn't really realize and appreciate certain moments in the, your life because you're just in it. Until you really have time to set back and like reflect on those things, do you be like, man, that's a big deal. To a lot of people would never have those like monumental moments, but like Michael Jackson wearing the only streetwear at that time for Carl Kanai, like that's an amazing monumental moment. Like not anybody could say that, obviously being the first time, but like how did that make you feel after you reflected knowing that? How did that make you feel? Think about it, the king of pop, who he is, wearing my brand, like, I just know, like, life's about destiny and goals. You gotta follow your dreams. And sometimes I think that the road to the top sometimes could be perceived as be sort of lonely. Of course. It's not everybody's gonna get your vision. And I've lost, I'm not gonna say the word is lost, but 
I've disconnected with a lot of friends on the road to the top where I'm going because I knew I was on a mission. My goal is always, I have a pivotal point when I get to, I'm gonna get there no matter what. If you wanna join me on this journey, come join me. I respect if not, yeah. I never say cut nobody off. You know what I say? Time out. For sure. Mental timeout. I always say, like, I can lead a horse to water, but I can't force you to drink it. It's one of those things. You know, I want everyone to win. If you're on my camp, I want us all to eat. And it's one of those things. But there's certain times that you, you really realize in certain situations who's really there for you and who's not. So, you know, unfortunately, if you've got to be in a timeout or not, you may reflect a little bit differently. But, you know, it doesn't make you lesser, any more important than you were in a pivotal point in your life. Focus, focus focus care less do more keep your emotions intact stay on your goals that's always been my motto and i realized that your mental and your physical all those things all coincide together for success because success is not meant for everybody of course do you know what i'm saying people are envious enough to that they want it and they think that it looks so easy but it's not as easy as people want it to be and the people that I feel like yourself, you've been such here for so long that you're a testament to that that whole saying is that you've put in the work, you're still here, you're still relevant, and that you know it's a big testament to the relevant world from being where it is today to ten years ago, twenty years ago. So much so, and I feel like once you get to the point in your life, you accept each moment, accept everything is all good, and if it doesn't go your way, it's just not meant to be. And that's kind of what's been driving us to continue on our path to success where we're going. And we've been very successful throughout the years. We had so many bumps and bruises in the road. And each bumps and bruise, you learn from that. If you're Just not gonna growth. quit, you gotta grow. Of all, course. It's all part of the game. You know what, I realized something like, I, I, I have this motto, once you go through a hiccup or something on your journey doesn't go your way, my mental is charged to the game. Because there's another option. Facts. You chose the role to be an entrepreneur, right? But there's other options. You know what you could do? McDonald's is hiring. No, thank you. I always use that Target, one first, too. Target's I'm always hiring. like, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't work in nine to five because I could do that. So there's certain trials and tribulations, even though it could be my worst day, it's not someone else's worst day. So you have to like put in perspective, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that your worst day is bad or not unwarranted because we're all humans and have our own feelings. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to like kind of almost sit back and be like, okay. Like not that bad. the blessings of what we have and everything is like, you have to like put in perspective, Yeah. but yeah, that's, that's a hard one to deal with. So let me ask you this, like with the whole like evolution of like where, you know, you started a long time ago with the whole business and where you're relevant still today is how do you feel about the brand, the new brands of like the fashion Nova's, the pretty little things, like all these brands of like coming up and like doing, not really creating, but putting merchandise out for everyone to but be she, a part of yeah you know again life is about acceptance and you got to accept where things are going of course and the minute you don't accept it that means it's stress on you because you don't have the power to change the momentum of where things are going or what the world is is meant to be and, exactly. and you know same with social media iphones and all these things that we never knew we could do 10 even five years ago it's a deep process. Even like when we came out, I'm sure a lot of other designers didn't want streetwear out there. Sure. It took away from what they were doing, but they had to find a way to accept it. So when this, these fashion, fashion brands started coming out, like fashion over, it's a pretty little things and all them, I started seeing it, and I'm seeing how they are capturing a young generation of people with a different mentality of thinking. And if you don't have the young generation wearing your brand, you're going to be obsolete exactly. eventually. you got to get in with the times. So being from the streets, coming from where I'm from, from where I'm from, realize that you got to associate with people who got a movement that you may not have. So what did I do? We did a collaboration, a pretty little thing. And it was a very common knowledge collaboration. We both wanted something from each other. They wanted legitimacy from streetwear, legitimacy to their brand. And guess what we wanted? We want that social media influence. And the new and generation of wearing. Ge exactly, which is what they had. Oh, yeah. It's a game changer right there. It changed our game. So we did a collaboration last year. It launched on my birthday. We signed Tiana Taylor. 
We had billboards at Times Square, three billboards. We had bill, uh, TV commercials in London, Europe, Amazing, all over yeah. the world. It introduced my brand to this whole generation of kids. They all want to be cool. They all want to be street. They all love Tupac. They all want to be part yeah. of the culture, didn't know how to do it. Pretty little thing introduced my brand to that culture. Yeah. So it was like a win-win for both companies. Of course, because again, like at this point, you have to, you know, you have to revamp yourself to, a, like you said, if the new generation's not wearing your thing, then they're not going to buy it. So if you're not going to be relevant to what's now, so if you have to change with the times, and I think that was like an amazing thing, especially using someone as big as Tiana, like it was yeah. a great thing. Like people wanted to see what she was wearing. She looked hot. She looked good. Like you know what I mean? Like it was. The color, everything, it was, yeah. It was the right it, moment. For sure. It was the right moment for hip hop, it was the right moment for the culture. And life's about adjustment, accepting adjustment changes to your life and your business, and you can learn to be more successful for the future. Don't get caught up on how things used to be, because no one cares. Of no course. one cares it's how It's like the old school like quarterback, like I used to do, like to five, I had five touch, touch, touchdowns a no game. One no one cares about the what if, no. could have, whatever. Yeah. No. It's about what are you doing now? What, have you what done is your current, lately? constant, whatever going yeah. on so what are you doing now currently you know we've been so blessed we just um celebrated our 30th anniversary this year congratulations and, uh, thank you so much and our brand is the number one streetwear brand in europe we're the number three selling brand in Foot Locker europe they have 1400 stores call can i now a thousand stores so it's nike Amazing. adidas call can number three selling brand in europe what we have the advantage we have is that we outgrown generations. We have parents who grew up on our clothing. Now we have the kids who Revamping want to be part of the 90s culture. They, all they do is see images of it. They don't, know, they don't know anything about it. They want to represent the culture. You know what they do now? Kids are smart. They do their research. Yeah. They see who was popular in the 90s. What they were wearing. What and that was wearing. great about what you did. You put your exactly. name on it. So you put it exactly on it. You didn't have to like have a label on the back. It was None right in front of your face. And bold. So there's no other brand they could show you Michael Jackson, Aaliyah, Tupac, Biggie, Jay-Z, Puffy, Nas, all in one brand. No one else but Carl Kanai. Because it wasn't about Carl, it was about the culture back then, what was real, what of was course. hot, what was in the culture. So that's why our brand resonates to this day. And Tupac plays a huge role. He's like a household name. He's the icon of hip hop. And I have over 200 pictures of him wearing my brand. No paid endorsement. He wore it because it was real. So you, you've said Tupac twice now in this segment. What iconic role has he, did he play a part in your life what, after him pushing your brand without no endorsement and all of that? That's a big thing because obviously he believed in you, yeah. your brand. Did you guys have a friendship? Like what, wh where did that go? Cause that's a big yeah. thing, you know? I mean, Tupac is, everyone loves him, every, you know, to this day, you know, yeah. regardless if you knew him or not, it's, he's still very true to a lot of people's hearts. Our relationship was really different. He's a Gemini also. Gemini's in the house. I you love know, my Gemini's. <laughs> very weird relationship, you know, like he used to wear my clothing all the time, so I really wanted to meet him. So we set up a meeting at the um, Hotel Nico, which is now an SLS Hotel in La Cienica. Okay. So I go to his room. It's the first time we've ever meeting, right? I knock on the door, he says, come in. We walk in and he's like, on a computer or a laptop, he's typing a script for a movie, and he's talking to me. And we talk about black culture, hip hop, Black Panthers, you know, his whole life. One weird thing though, he never looked at me in my eyes. He never looked up and looked at me, but he's talking to me. It's the Gemini thing. Yeah, building each other no, around. No, no, no. I, I feel that because <laughs> I know, because I'm like, until you like, even though you're comfortable, you're still in the awareness mode. But you're like, you know, if I'm talking to you and I'm being this in depth, that means you should know I'm comfortable. But you may not unless you're a Gemini. But I'm comfortable. It's a Gemini <laughs> thing, man. It's very, oh. Our two sides play a lot of things. You know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up being a Gemini more than anything in the Me world. So you know, it's people. one of those things that you know. So I know it's like people they like, say like, oh, what are you? And they're like a Gemini, like. Ooh, Ooh. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that's what I am. And then I add, I'm a Puerto Rican too. And they're like, oh, okay, even more Are you so. Puerto Rican? I am. I'm Puerto the Rican, German, Norwegian. The plant Norwegian. the peas and the rice, ay, and the curry goat. Really? Ay. Where do you think that big booty came from? Ay, there you go. Ay, now it all makes sense ay, to me now. Ay, okay, okay, okay. Big booty, big booty, big booty. Okay, now I get it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the things you find out at Private Talk. I know. podcast, you know what I mean? Last name? 
<laughs> Texas. There you go. Texas, Texas, <laughs> That's right, guys. You better subscribe, like this channel, Private Talk Podcast. You better do it. We're here with Kyle Kanai, and we're having an amazing time. I feel like we're getting more comfortable as we speak. So, yeah, let me hear more. So, so he knocked on the door. He wasn't looking you in the eye, nah, but he so was. Like, you were vibing him though because you still kept no, talking vibing. because you it's just super. like you were still wondering though like why aren't you looking me in the eye? Yeah. So but you as a Gemini know. Oh, there's more to the story though. Please tell me. So feel private. Feel he's comfortable. Smoking blunt after blunt. I like this already. All right. Maybe I should light this up right now. Just light it up. Let's do it in honor. Yeah. Let's no, do no, it. No, no, too Let's, Let's do it. Up. And then it's Where's like, at? I'll just use the candle. Fuck, I'm sorry. He never passed the blunt, though. Mm. Alexis. I didn't play baseball. He didn't pass the blunt. No, he mm. didn't pass the blunt. As a girl, that means something way different for dudes. So why didn't he pass the blunt? Because he was in his zone of what he was doing. Maybe he didn't know if I smoked it at the time. Because with guys, they're just like, well, where have your mouth in him? Like, come on now, shut your mouth. Like, come on now. <laughs> no, nah, I think he's enjoying the moment. So like, did you say, hey, puff, puff, puff? No, no, so you no, were no, intimidated no, because no, you didn't know. Not at all. So. My purpose of going with to, I want to meet him, but I also want to talk to him about doing a clothing advertisement, a clothing campaign for me. I didn't feel the moment to ask him. I remember room service came and knocked on the door to deliver some food to him. Do you remember what the room service, what the menu, what was on the menu that night? It was chicken. Chicken fingers? Chick it was fries? Some type of chicken. Was there ranch? It was, was fries. There hot sauce? Was there, there was ketchup? Fries there and Mustard? ketchup. No mustard. It was definitely some fries there. But the key with the room service guy had a towel around his face coming to the room with some smoke in the room. Oh, God. Months, right? At so least they like, didn't tell he was that cool that they didn't kick him out. They didn't kick him out. No, back then it was different, though. Back then it was, there was Tupac in the room, right? So I was like, okay. So after the guy came in, I was like, okay, here's my opportunity. I was like, yo, Pac, um, how much would you charge me to do an ad? How many shots did you have at this time? No shots. No, no? so you sober. just did it. Just okay. Because you said that you were nervous. You didn't know at I first. I was nervous. Yeah, yeah. But after room service, I was like, okay, let me ask him now. Okay. Right? Shoot your shot. Yeah. So he got really quiet. He didn't say anything. It felt like an hour. He was like, yo, I ain't going to charge you nothing. I ain't going to charge you anything. You black. I don't charge other people for nothing. And the man kept his word. Two weeks later, we was in New York. We did a photo shoot. It was the most iconic photo shoot that we've ever done in life. Once I asked him that question, that kind of broke the ice. That's awesome, though. That's like, it was organic. And that most people totally aren't organic. true on your word. So for you to keep doing that and for you to, like, as much as he repped your brand and, like, pushed it or whatever, is like, that's so much belief and, like, love in what you did is like it was crazy very like respectful then he goes like this he's like hold on I want one thing I was like here we go I want a hoodie no I'm just kidding like, here we go that's what I would say <laughs> he's like I want you to put thug life in some of the ads with me his crew I was like that's it he's like that's it then, then he changed. The, the Gemini came out. He's like, "Yo, I got He's this like, idea." So you said that's it. Yeah. So now I know there's a lead, there's a segue into something that I have yeah. more. Then he goes, "Yo, I want to do this ad." He, then he started creative directoring. He says, "Yo, I want to do an ad. I want to be on top of a basketball rim in my hat with no shirt on, with your sweatpants on." Why? He, he, everything he said happened. Every single thing he said. But like you said before, Happens. it's God sent. It's one of those things that you didn't know at the time, but it was already set in motion for the first time you met him. If it was inspirational, it was whatever from both times. Because creatives in most times, especially Geminis, like when you put people in a room of Geminis, like people are again, like as much as they're like mm, Geminis, they love us they because love us. they love us because we could be the best of both worlds. One thousand, yeah. we can adapt to any situation, but we're creatives. We're very creative in a lot of things where it's like. Sometimes it takes another Gemini to pull something out of us, but yeah. when we're together in that magnetic thing, it's like there's no stopping it, no and stop it's like you know, it's like crazy. you don't you don't look back, yeah. you know, you don't look back at all. Not at all. Like not that's all. an amazing, like that's not many people can have that, you know, that story. So again, <clears throat> that blunt is for you, Tupac. Super Represent. So I have a question for you. If you could give advice to the young Carl Kanai, what would it be? The only thing I know is my life and how I did things. And I can't speak towards how other people became successful because I don't know how that road works. I know how my road works. My work works is 
hard work, dedication, focus. Focus, focus, focus. Every night before I go to bed, I think about success. And success is what scares me every morning to wake up early. Like, I don't, I admire people sometimes that can sleep to 12, 1, 2, 12 o'clock. I don't know how they do it. Like, I'm like bro, how do you, sometimes I wish I could do that. But no, you don't. I think no, you really don't. No, you do. Don't. But on the other side, what you would do it for two days, and you're like, uh, you're like, I know, you're, you're driving know, yourself know, crazy. Trust me. <laughs> but I feel like you got to be scared of something in life to keep you going. You got to fear something. Something has to keep you motivated. Otherwise, you're gonna become complacent. You know what I'm saying? So like, I feel like hard work and focus what keeps me driven every day, and I will not fail for nothing. My motto is I rather die before I fail. I feel like you're on this earth for a purpose. Fact. I'm not on this earth to fail. I'm not on this earth to suffer. And if you think like it's okay to be suffering, to be down, shame on you. Cause why do you think like, why should somebody else have something that you don't have? I agree with that. Nothing in life is given to you. If you're putting all the work, you fucking focus, you're working hard, you're doing these things, you deserve success. If you don't feel you deserve it, then what do you feel for yourself? Like, don't succumb to other shit. Succumb to the best. So that's why I was with my motto. And I don't like dealing with no bullshit. I should just focus. So in my bad, in my worst times, we always found a way to find another route to be successful. And then once you think like that, you'll find a way. And keeping good energy and people around you will help you get to that point a lot closer. I like that. Yeah. So your current situation right now, so are you single, married? What is your current relationship status? Where, where are you at with that? Got two kids. Okay. Um, I'm single, uh, focused, you know, having two kids is great. Their mom, we grew up in the same projects. We just grew apart, you know, it is what it is, but we have two great kids and it happened. And they're successful what they do. So it's respectful co-parenting. Yeah. You know, we try. She's a Scorpio, so it's a little difficult for me. What does that mean for our listeners for the Private Talk podcast? What is Scorpio? What does that mean for people? Um, I just feel like sometimes Scorpio people, like, uh, maybe, like, it's like it's no negotiating with them once they don't agree with you on certain thoughts and stuff like that. So you got to find a balance. Very stubborn, one-sided. Yeah, somewhat. And it doesn't mean that I'm right. It just means that it doesn't connect right with my energy. Because you know, everyone feels that they're right in their feelings. Of like, course. Who is anyone to tell somebody they're not right how you feel? Because no one could tell me, Carl, you know, you shouldn't feel that way about it. How you going to Especially me? in a time right now where it's like everybody's right. Everybody's there's a lot right. of there's a lot of things where it's like people are questioning everything in the world, so it's just very up in the air. So again, everybody's feelings obviously matter. Yeah. But it's how you approach the situation and like how you are tactful about it. I mean, obviously you can't be a dick about certain things yeah. regardless of it. So the respect yeah. of it, like I said, with co-parenting. It- acceptance. Acceptance on what things are. And once you accept things, then you can be able to move forward in a positive manner because that's what life is about moving forward. Everything is not going to be exactly what you want, but you can sure change things if you have a different mentality about things. And that's how I move forward. So yeah, so that's my... Current situation, right okay. Now. And I'm happy about it, and I'm cool about where things are right now. All right, sure. I have a, a question, just like inspiring minds want to know. So like in your heyday, and even currently, like did you ever have to deal with like fashion groupies? Is that like a thing? Is it like people waiting at your doors at like certain things, like fashion events? Is that like something like DMing you? Is like people yeah. like, how do, how do you deal with that? How does that happen? Yeah. Does it happen? Tell yeah. Private Talk podcast um, what that's all about. I think like for me, like um, it's always like been dealing with like, models and stuff like that. So it's always been a- Is it because they're wanting to wear your clothes for free? Or is it because they want to model for you? Is it just because in general of who you are, your demeanor, like in what aspect? Because again, even with myself, like I've gotten hit up in the DMs several times, but yeah. does it mean that they want me? They want yeah. a persona of me. Yeah. They want Alexis Texas of what that persona is. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not that persona. Like <laughs> I talk back and I'm not right. really nice a lot of the times, okay. but you know what? I'm a great person, but yeah. you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So how do you like, just like describe that? Yeah. I think, you know, in my younger days, it was very fun. Cause you know, we all love attention. 
to design and it. that's like post like social media day so nobody yeah. was like paying attention to what you were doing you had uh, like to develop film like at a like you know 24 hour place if VHS you were lucky tape, or yeah. like a like just like hard film roll case, like something or Polaroid you know but nothing <laughs> came out really great Polaroids, so no one knew what you were back doing to the Polaroids yeah I think like you know when you're young coming up like yeah we all want attention ourselves and we will embrace that and I feel like a lot of girls want to be part of the culture, they want to be the feature models and stuff. But as you get older, you get wiser, you feel, realize all those things is bubble gum. Of course. They just want opportunities. And you gotta like gauge yourself on. But you also have to like dabble in the wanting opportunities because my, my, I myself get bored at certain things and I want to be entertained. So you have to be entertained by that as well. Yeah, but you know, like with me, I'm so fickle on who I want to be with. And girls that I want to really ultimately. But it doesn't necessarily like they want to be with them, but to be entertained by them. Yeah. You and know, it's, it's, it's short lived. You know. That's yeah. why it's like, well, the groupy nature of things yeah. is like, you know, being around people and not necessarily doing anything, but just being in the mix. In the moment. You know? Yeah. It was fun. You know, Black Dozen was very fun. We had a great time. It was very inspirational. You know, the funny thing about me, no matter how much we hung out, how many girls we've been around, I'm always up at six o'clock in the next morning. And guess what? Refocus on yeah. my grind. Because it was always about work. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of the fun behind, no like matter, the night before. Yeah. And I that. respect that. That's, that. That means you're a true entrepreneur. And that. it didn't, regardless of what the, the vice was or whatever, if it was girls, partying, whatever, you still got up and you did, Carl, can I? Me and my homeboys used to work for me. Like, we used to like have this thing. We used to go out and get drunk and go back to my house and party all night can i ask you what was your alcohol at that point and is it still currently the same thing oh no like back then we were doing like um e and j brandy oh shoot um, like all that like the accessible things the (laughs) hennessy and back then we were drinking and driving that means so that means you're doing a lot of not great things choices life choices probably were very blurry at that point we should crash a lot of cars (laughs) and do all the crazy shit but the weird thing again. We do not support drunk driving here at Private Podcast. No, we don't support this that. This was a long time ago that before all those days. things. That but was yes. back in the days. But yes. again, no matter what, come six o'clock, refocus. No, and that's on the, that's the most respectful thing. Every that because day. to me is again yeah. is why obviously who you are today and why you're still obviously relevant and still current. Even as you said, it's like you even doing the pretty little things thing like collab yeah. people knew who you were but you revamping your thing is this very more modern of like what the current people are doing it's like you evolve with the changes and it's like i love it like you know like i wear your stuff i've you did it before and it just it's it's very so you're still your brand and still just so very much you so it's very unique that you can still be in the business for as long as you have and still be true to your carl knight brand absolutely because you know what can't front from where you are. We've always stayed true to the integrity of the streetwear, and I I know for a fact what separates from every separates my brand from everybody else's history. Because no one could ever replace history. There's one thing that money can't buy. It can't buy legacy. It Facts. can't buy history. Money can never. No matter how much money you have, you can never perpetrate that you were here in the '90s. You can never perpetrate you did these things. No, no what? Time, like time is. I mean, yeah, you real. can't replace it. Unforgiven. So my point it's is timeless. that the time that we put in then is reaping benefits to this day because history is everything for sure. And that's one thing. What I like. <clears throat> what I gravitated to what you said earlier was like you. At the moments of when you were your highest peaks, you almost didn't really realize how high those peaks were until you maybe sat back a little bit and realized what those peaks were. Because my myself in my business, like I feel like I'm almost more reaping the benefits now of me sitting back and like enjoying your legacy, your brand, and all those things. And so those things is like it's just very satisfying to know that you're still like you've done so many monumental things that people could never even replace like the Michael Jackson thing like there's so many stories the Tupac thing like that's amazing and I again I appreciate you being here on the private talk podcast you're amazing I appreciate you um last question that I have currently right now Mm -hmm. who do you think is the best dressed male and female artists in the industry at this current moment wow okay um I think in terms of females, like um, 
Let's have a class. Keeping mm-hmm. it sexy, keeping it real. And again, this is your 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 yeah, taste, your genre, absolutely. your whatever you want it to be. I think like any girl that I think is dope, who's always fashion forward, who pushes to the limit, and this is someone who attitude. It's more of an army. It's more than just clothing. It's everything is a package. Of course. That'd be real. Well, for me, I think that that's what makes it yeah. all come together is it because be, it's a whole like yeah. thing. <laughs> it gotta be Rihanna. Like, hands down. Respect. Like, she doesn't That's my girl give crush two forever fucks in life. About what people think, what they say. She does what she wants. She wears what she wants. She, sh- she shows up when she wants. She does an album when she wants. She does whatever she wants. And she steps out. Everyone still cares who she is. Who she who is, she's doing. what she's wearing, yeah. what she's. She's, she's learned the game. You I know, respect that. The game is that. about pacing your time. Don't, don't go and give people what they want. Give it to them when you're ready to give them what they want. She is know your mass, worth. She is mass. Know your worth. Know your worth. And control your destiny. She's been a mass. I love that. That's the end. Longevity. She'll be around forever. You feel she's me? honestly, like I said, I don't just say that. Like she's my girl crush. Number one. All day. Love her. Hands down. And okay. In terms of males, you know, I would say Travis Scott is going to be a type of dude between his music and his fashion and where he's going. And what I love about him the most, he doesn't do interviews. You don't really know Travis Scott. Yeah. You don't know how he really talks. He never does interviews. You just know what he you gives see you. what he does. He gives you just enough. So you still like the vulnerability of like being an artist and not giving too much away because again, like social media and all these like new platforms gives you that whole like you could give everything away if you wanted to. Yeah. But like holding back a little bit more, I feel like makes your artistry more intriguing and makes you still sell albums, sell concert tickets, sell all these things that are what people are striving for. There's an important motto that we live by. It's like people always want what they can't get, what they, underst- what they don't understand. Once somebody figures you out and know what you think, know what you wear, you're not interesting anymore. Of course. They don't want you anymore. Like, it's just the way how things work. It becomes boring. It becomes not interesting. It's it becomes nice just anymore. like you always gotta expected. Push, you got to push the normal. To the limit and only talk when you got something going on. If you got shit going on, shut the fuck up, chill out, and go make a new album. Go make a new clothing collection. Go do something that's going to be relevant towards the culture moving forward. Sometimes people are so af- afraid of not being in the limelight. They don't know what it is that people, sometimes you got to take a step back to move forward. You know? I agree with that. Yeah. So here at the Private Talk Podcast, we like to push the envelope a little bit, but not all the way, but a little bit. So the last segment that we have is we have a game that we play, and um, it's basically going to be a game with Alexis Texas, and you're going to pick a card, and whatever card that you get based off of... Um, what symbol you get, I'm going to ask you a question and you have to get a little bit more naughtier with Miss Texas. I'm down. So here on Private Talk with Miss Texas, we're going to get to this game and see what um, Carl's questions, answers are all about. So I'm going to shuffle these cards. You're going to play with me and we're going to get a little bit more intimate with Miss Texas. Are you ready, Carl? I'm so ready. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? I don't know. You didn't sound too ready about that. No, no, I'm good. All in. All right. Brooklyn style. Ooh, all right. My family's from the Pick Bronx. One. We'll do it. Pick one. Damn. We're going to do one at a time. There you go. All right. What is it? What kind of? Ace of diamonds. Diamonds. Yeah. All right. So diamonds is my spicy question. Mm-hmm. So here at the Private Talk podcast, we want to know, where's the craziest place you've had sex? Wow. I would say... It was at Reese Beach. Reese Beach. In Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. Okay, how old? Let's set the mood. I was 17 years old Ooh. and I had a BMW. Ooh. And we drove to the beach. Getting we had it? nowhere else to go. Did you do it on top of the hood of the car? No, we didn't stand by the beach. It was actually pretty cool. Were there people there? It was not at nighttime, so no one really was around. Mm. We didn't have any blankets or anything like that. So you got a lot of sand all over yourself. So it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to work out, but we got the job There was done. sand, though. There was a lot sand of sand. Never go, sand's never a good situation because you're finding it, like, weeks later. Exactly, and that's 
kind of what got me caught out there. Cause like mm-hmm. my, my girlfriend at the time saw the stand in my car. And I had to explain how. Oh, I got so there. there was another girl, and it wasn't your girlfriend. No, it wasn't my girlfriend. It was mm, one of those situations spicy, at like the time. It. So you know, when you're young, you do things like that. So I thought it was pretty interesting because it was kind of like out in the open on the sand and the beach at night. How romantic so of you? Me. Yeah, it was cool though. I like yeah, it. It was good. Side bitch got romantic sex in the yeah, sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's she's pretty spontaneous, so it happened that way. You know I mean? I like your honesty. Yeah. Are you ready for more? I'm ready. Because I'm ready for more. Oh, I, that was just the, like the opening. Well, well, that was like the, the pry of the oh, Pandora. Man. But like you pry that thing open. I have a crowbar. Everything's okay. bigger in Texas. Don't you be afraid let's too go. much. Here we go. <laughs> right, let's Let go. Let's go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bam. What do we have? What do we have? Ace of, what is this? Clubs? Ace of clubs. 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 All right. Clubs is kinky. Hey, yeah. That's a kinky question. Mm. Okay. How kinky can you get? I can get kinky on you know, occasions. Yeah. Have you ever been attracted to your partner's best friend? Wow. <laughs> <That's deep. laughs> Current, present, past, private talk podcast with Alexis Texas wants to know, yeah, Carl. It, it has happened. Yes, that has happened. I never got on one. numerous occasions. No, on a few. Okay, a few. Because you know what it is like. Sometimes you with your girl, and like her girlfriends come over. Well, you're like, damn, I wasted it on her, and you're like, her friend was way hotter. Or like, no, how did the situation I come think about? Like sometimes when another girl comes around and she's like vulnerable, and she's like just being really open as to her feelings. Oh, so and, you like the vulnerability in a girl? Yeah, mm. do you know what I mean? So that kind of sort that of kind of Gemini. Attractive. I see you, Gemini. But, but then when you realize, <laughs> you realize that they're just being like that cool now. When you really have the girl, then you may have put all those issues on yourself you know what I'm trying to say so like at the time it was really cool it was very entertaining so yeah at other times but I was it never happened it never followed through uh, or maybe once or twice maybe just once I'm maybe <laughs> just once <laughs> only once once okay once is okay once, once like, is you, okay yeah. once is okay and before you like is- when you're younger you gotta give a pass you don't know better <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. All right, there we go. I really okay. liked it. Okay. I'll give you a applause. There you go. There you go. I, I like the honesty. Yeah. I like the honesty. Just be real because about it. I will be honest, I don't think that's ever happened to me no? ever. Only because like I don't know. I've also in my whole twenties was in the adult entertainment industry, so I fulfilled uh, every fantasy I ever had. So it was really like different for I me. Feel you. So but prior to Mm, I went to school with all these people, so I didn't really like anybody that was like somebody's friend, and yeah. it was just kind of weird. So I never had that. Yeah, but I I'm different because I went and did porn in my twenties. So you know, I'm just different from you. You went uh, did fashion, I did porn. Two different walks yeah. of life, but we're still the same Gemini on some levels. I just want to feel bad for them. I want to be comforting, maybe. Oh, too so you much. feel bad for her? Yeah. Oh, you're so you're Captain Save a Ho. Yeah, the other. You're, you're, you have so, a cape. Exactly. Oh, so Captain the other part of your world. Gemini is you're saving yeah, the world one ho at a time. World. Yeah, I like you know, that, I Carl. Bad. So it was good though. It, it Can you make a cape line for your fashion line? Maybe you should have capes. And it should be like Captain Save a Ho. Alexis can I <laughs> for the world. There you go. We're gonna, saving one ho at a time. Go, there you we'll go. give like one away for each like charitable profitable like thing, you know. Bingo. One thought at a time gets like one that. for free. I like that. For every thoughty moment. I don't really know. There we'll we'll come up as it comes along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got we got two more cards. Here All we go. Here we go. go. Here we go. Okay, bam. I see what we got right here. You got, got that, a, you got that? Ace now of that you're hearts. you're comfortable with me. Yes. Ace. Ace. There we go. Ace hearts. You got my ace. Yes. What we got for you? Hmm. 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 What we got? What you, what, what you got? What you got? Ace. Oh, I got the ace of hearts. Do you? All right. Yep. I want to know mm-hmm. what is the longest amount of time that you've gone without sex? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, why do you say it so like why do you laugh was, like it like this is a thing people who know gemini's when you laugh like that that's usually not really a great thing afterwards because right. it's like comes with a plot of something yeah and um, and what see also people don't know to like with your story because i want you to say it but gemini men are very more like gemini women when it comes to like feminine male traits of like acting on those things yeah. so that's why I know you more than you think I know you Carl I know that it's just scary mm-hmm. I know that I know don't that. be scared we're in a private 
situation. I feel you. Private talk is about an intimate conversation. Feel free with Miss Texas. Yeah, I won't absolutely. bite you. I got you. you I won't away, bite you. I got you. So the longest time <laughs> I would say, you. I would say is probably two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Why do you feel like that was like an eternity? I feel like that was like pulling teeth from you. Because I was on an overseas trip in India. You sounded such like a child. Like, oh, because my mom didn't give me something. <laughs> like, oh, my Because I was in India in the huts. We were like living and working in factories. There was nothing there. So there was no Indian vagina. There was nothing. <laughs> no. no but, hey, I do have a funny story about that. Though. Please tell me. I want to know. Okay. So we did go back to the hotel one night. Of course, because we I, all do. I had when we're my, in India, there's nothing else. I had to one do. of my friend's homies from New York, Brooklyn, named Harry. He worked for shout the, out to Harry. He works for the city, but he's my best friend. So he used to take time off just to travel with me because we had, always had fun, right? So he, he was really backed up in India. He was what backed is, up before he got to India. What does that mean? So he didn't have sexual relations for yes. a very long time, even before he got to India. So he's really backed up in India. So yeah. So. We found a guy down a lot. It's a true story. Lie to you not. We found a guy. You better not lie to me. That's some New York shit. Lie to you not. We found that a, is for sure we some found New a concierge in the nothing. lobby. And we told him, my man Harry got hooked up. He found a guy who brought his two daughters to the hotel room. Oh, my God. Right? Sounds a father horrible. in India had his two daughters He's for his daughters out. So Harry said he wants both of the daughters. Yeah, as he should. As he should. But that's fucked up as a father. Yeah, well, in India, uh, things happen. Okay? Obviously. So he brought them there. And my man Harry had the best time in his life. And I sat, and we and we had a flight to catch. Did you watch Harry? Were you a cuckold in this situation? Or were you no, just I, like, no, you we let Harry a, we, do his thing? We had a flight to catch. You know six. what a cuckold is? What is that? Okay, let me educate me, you. So a cuckold me. means, maybe you did this with Harry, you don't even know. Tell me. A cuckold means that you were, like you had nothing to do with their sexual encounter, but you watched Oh no! in I the same room. Wasn't really watching, I was packing because we had to catch a flight at 6 o'clock. So, but what happened was... And what happened was... <laughs> you're very precise about Harry, this, Carl. <laughs> Please tell me it more. It happened in real time. Harry did what he had to do, had a great time. He had sexual relations had with sex, twins or with two sisters. sisters. The dad was happy. They got of course, because he got paid. He, he probably got paid, paid his whole rent for fucking was a good. year. So it was really interesting. It was really fun to see Harry so <laughs> relaxed on his trip trip back home. We had to like stay with each other. Was home. Harry married? No, Harry was a single guy. Okay, Only a single dude. He, he went back no home discretion. so relaxed, <laughs> such a happy man. And I made Harry such a good guy. He was a really good guy. You're a good trip. friend, though. That, no, that would mean a lot to me to no, take care of him. No, that's a good friend because I do that stuff, too. Is like I don't reap the benefits of what Alexis Texas brings sometimes, right. but my friends do. Because yeah. I'm like, I would rather them like be happy yeah. than me. And I've... I mean, I've done a lot. Right. Like, I mean, I'm satisfied in life. <laughs> so, like, I'd rather them, like, be happy. So, it's, yeah, it's satisfying yeah. that way. So, yeah, Harry is very, he should be very happy to this day. Do you still talk to Harry? I still talk to Harry. It's my boy. Does and he still talk about this story? He told me the story all the time. But that means story. you know it's real. No, because no. if you talk about to this day, yeah, that means it was Harry fun. It was it. real. We had a good time. He was like, he he released himself. He became a new person. He had pimples before he came. I on like the trip. how you say it so and like nonchalantly. He released himself. And like no, because honestly, he had like pimples on the chip before he came. <laughs> pimples After where? That, on his face. And when he oh, got back, the pimples okay, went well, away. It, let back let my podcast people like know the private talk with Alexis Texas. We need to know what pimples are, he, where they are, what's going on. You know. A lot of things happen in the new age. He was backed up, but he's cool now. So he's my homie. He's my dog. And he had a good time, so it was good. All right. My favorite card. What we got? Wow. Ace of Spades. This must be a good one, I'm sure. So Spades here at Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas is my favorite card because it's just like my booty, but different. So I want to know your weirdest sexual experience. Weirdest sexual experience. Yeah. Wow. When you say weirdest, like, is that like the time I had the most fun or something the most well, different or what? Touche. To me, a weird can mean something different to my podcast listeners here, which you guys should also be subscribing and liking right now at the private podcast talk with Alexis Texas. But it's up to you. So it's your discretion, your weirdest moment. If you think it's good or bad, weird to me would be maybe like a little bit good, but a little bit weird, but you still went with it. And so it was good at the end, but you know, it would maybe have been a little bit trouble in the movie, you know, you're a Gemini. I know you, you okay. I just saw that look. I know okay. something happened weird, Carl. 
Well, feel free. We have Thomas, text us with it. A lot of weird situations, but I would say the most enlightened situation was there was a time that we're in a hotel and Shout out it to had a hotel. lot of windows <laughs> in the hotel surrounding the room. And you people sort of could see in the room, kind of sort of. The voyeurism. Yeah. How many people? Was oh. it just you and one other person? Sorry, my perverted mind is going somewhere else. <laughs> well, it was. Um, or we're not allowed. It was to talk more about than it. two. So does that mean three and you? Two, two plus one. It's three. Three. Okay. <laughs> Four is a crowd. Three is good. And I thought what was interesting was that the windows kind of gave you the, the feeling like other people could see what's going on. Mm hmm. Unless they can, because I've yeah. been the one in the window looking. And that was really interesting <laughs> to me because I, I felt sort of vulnerable at the moment because I felt like... They could see you. Yeah. And so you kinda, didn't know if they were looking or they weren't, but you yeah. felt you were and naked. Yeah, you kind of made yourself kind of out there. But I think what made me more relaxed, this is before the era of social media and camera phones and things like that, but it kind of just made you a little bit more exciting about what was going on and everybody was calling down with it so i thought it was pretty cool and it was something that i would want to do again for sure windows it it open. yeah windows open windows make it exciting i have a window different. story do you mm -hmm. it was exciting it was exciting yeah what made it exciting it was exciting for the fact of only because of like again the taboo of not knowing but knowing or you you think that they're seeing you because you're just in a window and you can see obviously windows are transparent right so you can see through it so it's like being caught but not so it was like they see me but you don't know or not but it was just thrilling because you were in it so i was just like Ah, like doing my own thing. Yeah. But again, if they saw or not, probably nobody saw. Who knows? Nobody complained. I didn't get kicked out of the room. So I was good. Was but a, like, you never thrill, know. It's a thrill of the moment. Yeah. It's like just saying? the voyeurism of like the taboo. Yeah. That thing. So yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. I like, like that. Yeah. That was kind of my So thing, you would do thing. it again. Repeat offender. Absolutely. No doubt about so it. So you just need to find your room with all windows. All windows. I think there could be no cell phones around. There's a lot of. Lot of obstacles go along with it. For sure. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But yeah the day, it's a vulnerable thing. Cause it's fun. The time of like, again, you did a lot of crazy shit that I wish I could get away with with no cell phones, but yeah. now cell phones are everywhere. Can't do shit. No, now, everywhere is cell phones. <laughs> yeah, All right, cool, guys. Though. Thank you so much, Carl, for being a part of my private talk podcast. You are an amazing guest. Thank you for being so vulnerable, honest on my talk show couch i don't know what to call it right now but yeah thank you so much for being honest your questions um are definitely warranted thank you so much carl you've been awesome thank you guys for listening to the private talk podcast with alexis texas make sure you like and subscribe and uh yeah let's see what's next for the private talk podcast Chip, clock on the house without a doubt Choo.